I'm Professor Curtis Meyer from the Department of Physics at Carnegie Mellon University, and I carry out particle physics research in order to study what's inside protons and neutrons, the things that build up the nucleus of an atom. In order to study something so small, you need a really big microscope. Unfortunately, that microscope isn't the microscope you're probably familiar with from high school, but in my case, it's a particle accelerator. I carry out my research at a particle accelerator located in Newport News, Virginia, called the Thomas Jefferson National Accelerator Facility. When the accelerator started running in the late 90s, we started answering a bunch of scientific questions. And as usually the case when you start answering questions is you create more questions. And a number of us started to realize that there were some really important questions that we might actually be able to address if we could get a little more energy out of the electron beam. Inside of a proton and neutron, we know that there are particles called quarks. And the quarks are held together, or they're force carriers or something called gluons. So there's sort of a soup of quarks and gluons going around. And the gluons are very interesting because they, could in, they create an incredibly strong force. In fact, if you tried to pull the quark out of a proton, it would require a force of almost 20 tons. And there's so much energy associated with that force of trying to pull it out that Einstein with E equals mc squared wins, and it's easier for nature to create a particle and an antiparticle and leave you stuck with that quark attached to something else. You cannot pull a quark out of a bound system. It's forever confined. In addition to creating this force, it turns out it's also responsible through the energy, the tremendous energy, for creating most of the mass of the proton. Less than 1% of the mass of the proton comes from the quarks. The rest comes from the gluons. One of the exciting things that came up was a theoretical prediction that if you could excite these quarks inside of a proton, you could create a new class of matter where you didn't just have bound quarks, but the gluon played a role more than just matter. It was something you could actually measure. You could create an exotic particle where these gluons mattered. And so we set out to try to discover these and then map out where they are and what their properties are. And that's what this gluonic excitation or the GLUEX experiment is doing. About 12 years after we first got together, we were able to finally start construction of upgrading the accelerator and building the detector. And at that point, I was the leader of an international collaboration that was building parts of this detector all around the world, which would ultimately ship to Jefferson Lab. At Carnegie Mellon, we took responsibility for a critical part of that, which allowed us to reconstruct the trajectories of charged particles, something called the drift chamber. It was a pretty fun project because the device itself consisted of 3,500 5 foot long straws. These straws, about 3 quarters of an inch in diameter, but the thickness of a human hair in the walls. And they had to be aligned precisely into a frame. And if that isn't enough, once we had them aligned, we had to take a very fine gold-plated wire, about a fifth the diameter of your hair, and precisely align it down the center of each one of these straws. You can imagine this took us a while. We built a clean room right across from my office, and we had several technicians and scientists that endeavored for three years to build this device. Finally, in late 2013, we were able to transport it to Jefferson Lab, where it was eventually installed in the detector. We built one piece, there were pieces from all around the world to reconstruct energy of photons, other charge tracking devices, and it all sort of converged to Jefferson Lab in 2012 to 2014 and was assembled into this large detector called the GLUEX experiment. In the fall of 2014, everything turned on for the first time and we got beam in the detector. And one of the most gratifying things was one of the event displays showing what was happening was our detector that we had built at CMU showing spiraling tracks going around in the magnetic field. So we could see immediately that the experiment was working, the detector was working, and it was a, and it was a very exciting time. As we're continuing, we are now approaching in the fall of 2016 our first dedicated physics run. We've had a number of runs since then where we have hopefully collected data to get publications in, in the spring of this year. But physics will be starting now, and we expect this to be going on for 10 years. There are 130 scientists working on this project. Currently, 15 of them are graduate students, two of whom are from Carnegie Mellon. At the end of this 10-year project, we expect at least 50 PhD theses, a large number of publications, and ultimately, a much better understanding of this strong gluonic force that binds quarks inside of protons.